champ is here, Swiss gears. We keep it haters in the rear. Got the blood, sweat, and tears in my go so near. I see my baby, I so It's a game, we break through. 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 Yeah, yeah. Uh. Underrated, underrated, we the underdogs, underestimated. Yeah. Underrated, underrated, we the underdogs, underestimated. We the one. My name is Molly Schaus. I'm a two time Olympic ice hockey player. Hello, Ready Set Go family. I'm Gideon Massey. Uh, my name is Katina Lori. I'm an archer. My name is Megan Blunt. Hi, my name is Cami Craig. Hey everyone, my name is Cody Jones. I'm a 2016 Paralympian. Hello and welcome everybody. I'm John Neighbor, Olympic swimmer from the 1976 Games and we're here in the John Moffat breakfast area and here is John Moffat. <laughs> I started doing triathlons at a very early age. Kind of like how old you guys are. That hard work is the added ingredient that is vital to having success. I think the hardest part about it was not the fact that I was in a wheelchair, but it's the fact that I was filled with a regret for everything that I had taken for granted that I didn't even know I was taking for granted at the time. You feel good after this. You feel better about yourself after this. We got this, 25. Ready? Go. That's what the exercise is for, to challenge yourself. Squat a little lower, jump a little higher. What if you became an Olympian? What about what if you became a Paralympian? That was my what if. 
After I lost my leg, I realized how lucky I was because I had only lost one leg. I had my arms, another leg, and I had my life. I call them banana coins. They're little tiny discs. Here we go. Yep, we're we'll getting the whole body worked out, yep, right? Yep, I'm feeling it in my core, too. Feel that stretch just a little bit stronger there. I love Ready, Set, Gold because it allows us to talk about Olympism or the Olympic ideals, which we love to share. Olympians love to share those philosophies with the rest of the world. Ready, Set, Gold 2021 Spring Series is powered by the Foundation for Global Sports Development. Hi. Hello, all. Welcome to the LAY's second Girls Equity and Sports Panel Discussion. I'm Bonnie Barnes, a member of the WISE Board of Directors, and honored to be part of our efforts to encourage and enable girls in LA to participate, play, and keep playing sports. Today is International Women's Day, and the theme is Choose to Challenge. I challenge stereotypes, and today we're going to hear from successful women who live and thrive in the sports world. I also believe that to achieve some of that success, it is critical for women to empower other women. And I look forward to hearing how these successful women were helped and are helping. First, it's my honor to introduce Kayla Kinnearan. Kayla has served as a host for the LA Kings since 2018. She's a native of Springfield, Missouri and attended the University of Missouri where she studied communication and was a member of the Mizzou Golden Girls dance team. Through Golden Girls, Kayla enjoyed a front row seat to every Mizzou football and basketball game, and will never forget when the Tigers were number one in the nation, hmm, for a week. Prior to her role with the Kings, Kayla spent three years in the Midwest, working as the network host covering the Cardinals, Blues, Rams, and Mizzou. Kayla has also worked as a host and video content producer for Fansided, the premier lacrosse league, and most recently, Asimo. Kayla is also working for Fox Sports West Social, covering the LA Kings, and looks forward, like I do, like I'm sure you do, to when we can all return to live sporting events. <laughs> Kayla. Thank you, Bonnie, for taking a leadership role with a very important charity-based organization here in Los Angeles. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our esteemed panelists who are joining us this afternoon. First up, we have Vice President and Legal Counsel for AEG, Kate Sheets. Kate, how are you today? I am great. How are you? I'm doing well. We're excited to uh, chat with you and learn more about all that you do in the world of sports. Thank you. Um, I'm very excited to be here. Same here. Yeah. Serving as the scout and inclusion specialist for the LA Kings, Blake Bolden will be joining us from her car somewhere in California. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. Blake, you've had a busy day. Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, I'm in an eight hour drive back home to San Diego. Uh, earlier this morning, I was on NHL Now, and now I'm here with you guys. It's a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. You're at a rest stop somewhere on the highway in California, but uh, yeah, you've had a busy day and we're thankful that you carved out some time. Also joining us, we have USA Paralympics cyclist and Ready, Set, Gold mentor, Samantha Bosco. Samantha, how's it going over there? It's good. It's good. Thanks for having me. How are you doing, Kai? We're great. I'm, I'm super excited. <laughs> I might be a little too excited right now. <laughs> Well, we've got some awesome questions to ask you all over the next hour, so we're going to jump right in. Kate, we're going to start with you today. Uh, just tell us what is women's empowerment? Is it about gender, equality, or is it is it more than that? That's a really good question. I, I think if it wasn't more than that, this would be a very short call. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think a lot about this question and, when, and what it means today. And I think, um, you know, we think a lot about equality and we think a lot about empowerment and I, I think about it like equality is sort of the end goal and then empowerment is what is the path to get there, right? And and equality doesn't mean a whole lot if the path looks different. And so uh, I think a lot about opportunity and certainly giving uh, the amazing talented women we have in this industry or that who want to get into this industry the opportunity to join. I think one of the things that intimidated me about getting into the sports industry was that I didn't know anyone. 
And I thought, oh, they're, you know, how, how can I break in if I don't have any connections? Right. And so, um, you know, happy to talk about later how that worked out for me. But I think one of the things that I look for in this industry in particular is making sure that we uh, collectively are, are granting opportunities to women who, who want to join this industry. And then just sort of in the professional world generally, uh, in addition to reaching out and, and giving those opportunities and amplification to, to women in, in this industry, I think we have to think about um, mentorship versus sponsorship. And so, you know, all of us look for mentors and all of us look for people that can help us out and give us advice. But I, I think we have to take that one step further and really be sponsors, be champions of one another, be because I think that that is a, a very important difference in uh, making sure that we're bringing as many women as possible uh, to the highest levels of their potential. Well said. Um, Blake, we're going to throw to you next. Uh, you are all true champions in your own right, of course, and have accomplished incredible things in the world of sport. But it required a journey for you to get to where you are now. What individual or individuals would you say had the greatest impact on you growing up that provided that inspiration for you to succeed uh, where you are in the sports world today? Absolutely. I'm a young girl from Cleveland, Ohio. Hockey wasn't something that I had dreamt of playing. I had my father, who was a security guard for a professional team in Cleveland, he gave me the opportunity to pick up a stick and learn how to play the game. I've had amazing coaches, male and female. I went to boarding school. My mom worked her tail off to pay for that and ultimately get me a scholarship to play the game that I love. From there, playing professional women's ice hockey, I've had mentors like Angela Azurio, Manom Rayom, Katie King, and obviously now working with the Kings, there are so many powerful, influential women and men that have helped me stand in my power today. Awesome. Samantha, next question for you. Um, did you ever have an aha moment that led you to believe that you could accomplish great things in your life? And if so, when was that? That's a great question. I feel like I've kind of always had little aha moments my entire life. Um, the first one I can recall was when I was mountain bike racing in Alaska before I had surgeries that gave me the permanent damage that results in me being a paracyclist. And I just remember my, both my parents, my dad and my mom really, um, really supporting the decision for me to race mountain bikes. Cause I was eight, nine years old in Alaska going through mountain bike trails that there were moose in the middle of the trail that you had to like, wait and stop for them to move because obviously you can't ride next to a moose on your mountain bike. <laughs> um, and just stuff that would kind of, I think, intimidate people to let their young daughter go do. My Both my dad and my mom kind of embraced it. My dad really uh, honed in on my independence and my strong will nature. And we rode all the time in the trails over there. And my mom would go around and film it and encourage it and be yelling and you could always find each other throughout the park. And so for me, I felt like every time I went through a mountain bike trail in Kincaid Park was my aha moment because if I could do that trail, if I could make it up this hill, if I could go through a hairpin turn in the loose sand, I could do anything I wanted to. And my parents really instilled that in me every time. So I feel like that was my first aha moment. And I kind of get that throughout the rest of my life with the continuous encouragement from male and female and all of the people along the way. That's awesome. Um, Samantha, we're going to go right back to you. And you'll notice that these questions are similar. Uh, we want everyone to be able to answer all the questions that we have today. So we're going to do a little bit of a snake draft here. Coming right back, what is women's empowerment? Is this about gender equality or is it more to you than that? I don't know. I think it's more. I think a lot of times for me, it's a kind of a struggle because I feel like as women, we're so predisposed to compete against each other, whether that's through societal norms or the lack of opportunity for women. So there seems to be, in my experience, the lack of supporting each other and bringing each other along and more 
like, oh, there's this position, there's this spot on the team. I want that for myself. I'm not going to support other women trying to get it because if some other woman gets it, that means the opportunity is gone for me. And so I think that that's such a terrible stigma that has to be broken. So for me, gender equality and the movement and all of it just means having more space for women and having more opportunity to allow women to actually encourage each other and be supportive of each other. So I think there's, I think it's definitely bigger than just equality, male versus female. I love that. Yes. We're better when we're supporting one another. Absolutely. Yes. Um, Blake, was there an aha moment for you that led you to believe that you could accomplish great things in your life? There have been so many aha moments for me. It was when I saw a young black girl give me a poster that she wanted to sign. And I realized that me playing hockey was more than just having fun. It was about developing the younger generation, especially the BIPOC community, non-traditional hockey players. That meant the world to me. And that was my first aha moment. And the more I progressed in the sport, the more beautiful people I got to meet and share dreams and aspirations. And that is something that's very special that we can all build each other up. And I'm just stretching out my arms to these young girls saying that you can be here too, if that's something that you want to do. I can attest to this. You are a a huge role model. Um, I've gotten to do uh, a live with you before where we talked about how you're a trailblazer in every right. And um, I just think it's so cool that that little girls have you to look up to. Um, Kate, coming back to you, you are all true champions in your own right and have accomplished great things in the world of sport, but obviously required a journey for you to get to where you are now. So what individual or individuals had the greatest impact on you growing up that provided the inspiration for you to succeed in the world of sport today? I think, you know, I had to think hard about this because I've I've been fortunate to have a lot of people support me along the way uh, in my journey to where I am today. I think, you know, as has been mentioned already, I think your your family unit is a big influence. My parents certainly were always a huge inspiration and influence to me. They never made me feel like I there was something I couldn't do. Uh, there was never the talk of, oh, well, girls don't do that. And so it was really, I was always encouraged to to do whatever I, I wanted to do um, and, and that I wanted to set my heart on and to work hard and get there. And so they instilled in me, you know, the value of hard work and the value of dreaming big, which I think, you know, you, you marry those dreams with some ambition and dedication and, and you can really achieve great things. And so that was always a great inspiration to me. I was always very fortunate to have a group of friends that are, are driven women who dream big. Um, and I had, you know, coaches, I, I don't pretend to have the same level of academic prowess uh, as my fellow panelists here, but I certainly had the benefit of uh, being an athlete as, as a kid and as a high schooler. And I, I think that was just an invaluable experience in terms of getting, uh, learning the values of, of team sports and um, fueling my passion for, for sport. And I, I think the, the last thing would be, you know, help all, all of those people really helped me realize that um, what, a, what a career in sports could look like. And, and I wasn't going to be a professional athlete, um, but I could contribute and contribute to and participate in this industry in a meaningful and really fun way. And uh, that is really what led me to have the confidence to pursue uh, marrying my professional goals uh, with my personal passions um, in terms of, you know, working, working in a legal field, and which is a fairly male dominated industry as it is, uh, and, and, and ending up in the, in the sports industry. So I, I will say I've been fortunate to have people from all, all facets of my life sort of in, encouraging me and pushing me um, to, to keep taking that next step to achieve. I love that. Just out of curiosity, what sports did you play growing up? Um, I tried a little bit of everything, but I I stuck with basketball all the way through high school. Okay, good for you. Um, I know I wanted to follow up with another question. You said uh, it's important to have people to look up to and to to fight for you. And uh, the question you answered um, at the top of the show, Uh, who are those people in your life? Uh, The people who fought for me? Yes. And the people that you looked up to and. Sure, sure. So I think. I'd have to look to a few people. I think where it really meant 
the most to me or where it really started to take shape was um, when I got to, I, I had a friend in high school who wanted to go to law school and she was, um, she really encouraged me to do the same and, and I think pushed me to, to study hard and to, you know, I went with her on tours. And, and so that was a great example of having somebody in my peer group who actually helped kind of fuel my, my dream. But then once I got to a law firm, uh, I had a mentor. The first sports transaction I ever did was that I worked on the acquisition of the, of the Dodgers. And that was about 2012 or so. And uh, there was a partner working on that deal who really took me under his wing and, and noticed that I had a, an interest in this as an industry, as a profession. And because I didn't know what working in sports as a lawyer looked like. And so he was able to show me that and give me opportunities and, and I think realized some potential that I had. And then when I went to my next law firm, um, there was a program there started by the chairman of the firm at the time that was specifically focused on sponsoring women at the firm. And it was focused on elevating their careers and giving them opportunities. And so I really looked up to, um, the, the effort that he had uh, that he put into to fostering those relationships and to fostering those careers at the firm. And then I worked in particular for a woman there who was a working mom and um, really, I think, exemplified a lot of the qualities I wanted to have as, as being a good teammate and, and being an excellent lawyer and, and being good with clients. And so I really tried to model myself after her and she gave me a lot of really good practical advice. Uh, so there have been a, a handful of people here and there, I think both personally and professionally, um, that, that have had a, a huge impact on, on where I am today. Awesome. We're going to kind of go along those same lines, uh, going to Blake now, uh, Blake, we've talked before your family is a huge support and they've been behind you 100%. Um, and having a strong support system is very important. So how would you suggest looking for that support and what questions should the young women watching right now be asking for? I would say to just be open-minded and attack your dreams and think as big as possible. I would say try to communicate with the people that are in the roles that you're interested in, whether that's coaching, being a lawyer like Kate, uh, marketing, working in the front offices of a sports organization or franchise. I think that's really important. You know, get out there, make yourself a resume. Don't be afraid to try new things and get uncomfortable. Because it, when, you, when you try new things and you get uncomfortable, you learn more and you can develop skills, communication, teamwork, get over some fears that you might think are holding you back. So that's the sort of advice that I would give for any young kid that has dreams and aspirations to do anything, really. That's excellent advice. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is, uh, everything you want in the world is right outside of your comfort zone. Um, and yeah, you don't, you don't learn, you don't grow unless you get uncomfortable. And I think it's important to do that all the way throughout your career. Never get too comfortable. Keep, keep striving and pushing. Um, Samantha, we're going to go to you. Can you tell us about a cause or program that you feel strongly about? Yes. Yeah, so I have been a part of, um, classroom champions and ready, set gold now and also another one called One Revolution that really goes in and um, goes back to schools and through or even through video because Classroom Ch Champions does it through video. Ready, Set, Gold goes to schools and does video now because of not being able to go into the schools. Um, and so Run Revolution is kind of going along those routes too. But all three of those organizations really give back to the children and they find a way to encourage future generations to learn more um, values and traits that they can use in life early on and really excel. And so for me, it's, it's super important to be a part of those organizations so that I can pay it forward and give back and share my own experience to really help people early on because I was fortunate enough to have great people in my life, including my parents and, and my brother, who's my little brother, but I admire him too. <laughs> but I want to be that for someone else. I want to go into a classroom and share my story and share how to take feedback or share how to take uh, a life lesson and, and have it hit home and see in their eyes that 
what I'm saying is resonating and can ultimately change their life and make them go after something that they thought was out of reach. Awesome. You are definitely an inspiration. So keep, Thanks. keep doing your thing. Thank um, you. Absolutely. Kate, leaders in sports can positively influence athletes to achieve their goals all the way from the field to the boardroom. How can you pay it forward? Uh, I, I think about this a lot. I th one of my professional mantras is to always leave the place better than you found it. And so I think every job that I go into or every project that I go into, you want to look for a way to make a positive impact. And so I think in this particular case, uh, I, I definitely, I talked a lot earlier about mentorship and sponsorship and, and reaching that hand back and giving somebody an opportunity um, that maybe I didn't have. And, and I think, Samantha, you made a really good point when you talked about how I think there was for a while a dynamic uh, with women that was kind of a zero sum game. You know, if, if I get this opportunity, that means you can't or, you know, I had to go through this. So you have to also. And, and I, I just don't agree with that mindset anymore. And I, I think that um, that is definitely changing for the better. So for me, in terms of paying it forward, it's really all about finding, giving other people opportunity, giving other women opportunity and, and sort of giving some space at the table for voices that may not otherwise be heard. And even something as small as, you know, reaching out and connecting to people who are new to the company or, or looking to women who are uh, maybe in lower or middle management positions and, and learning more about what they do or giving them the opportunity to speak up in a meeting, you know, making sure that their opinions are heard. Because I think sometimes uh, women are insecure about voicing their opinions um, and, and being heard. And so I, it, it's very important to me that, that women get those opportunities. We are all in agreement. Everyone in the chat is just nodding away at all these answers. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are doing great. Um, Kate, going right back to you with another one. Can you tell us about a cause or program that you feel strongly about? Sure. Uh, for the last few years now, I have been on the board of directors of an organization called Free From. And Free From is dedicated to dismantling the connection between intimate partner violence and financial security. And so uh, it's a cause that I have felt very passionate about for some time. And I think that this organization um, does an incredible job of finding a unique solution to an all too, unfortunately, all too common problem. And rather than focusing on sort of direct intervention, uh, it, it focuses on helping survivors build themselves up financially uh, long term. So whether it's through policy changes in the law, whether it's through entrepreneurship programs and job training and you know, small things like how to fix your credit score, uh, to working with banks in helping the, uh, banks set up certain procedures and policies to help survivors gain access to uh, to credit or, or to funds, um, and to creating a, a sense of, of community among, among survivors, uh, that critical sense of community and peer-to-peer and -peer network. Um, and so I, again, I've, I've, I started with the organization kind of at its inception and have watched it grow uh, tremendously. And even during the COVID period, they were able to give out over a million dollars in cash grants to survivors to help them do things like pay rent or pay, make their car payment. Uh, and so I think they're really doing a lot to make a positive, positive impact in the world. That's incredible. Awesome work. Samantha. Having a strong support system is obviously very important. Uh, how would you suggest looking for support? And what questions should the young women watching right now ask? <laughs> I've learned this through trial and error because I feel like for a long time, I was so humble in asking. And like Kate said, kind of intimidated, intimidated to, like I almost didn't deserve it in a way. Um, so for me... I, the first advice I would give is to just be you and just ask, uh, maybe be a little specific with what you are looking for. Um, not necessarily, you don't necessarily have to know who it is because you don't know what everybody knows. Um, somebody can know something or know someone to connect you with. But I think if you're specific or I, like we like to say through one of the lesson plans for the kids, is when they have a goal to be smart about the goal. And I think to be smart about what you're looking for, uh, be specific, be meaningful, have a, an action orientation to it, um, be authentic and have a, a deadline, if you will, or a timeline of what you need it for when you need it by. And just ask and know that 
majority of the time you're going to get a no, but those yeses will help tremendously and they're always there, but they're not there if you don't ask. That's such a great point. And I think that I'm sure all of us in the panel today have felt that way one way or another, like, like you said, feeling like you don't deserve something or being afraid to ask for something. So I, in, in my cases, like, I don't want to come across as someone who's a pain to work with or, but it's like, the guys are asking for the same thing. Why would I feel that being a woman is going to make that any different? But it's, yeah, it's important to ask, ask the questions, fight for what you want, know that you belong, know that you deserve to be there. And, um, that was a, a great point you made. So thank you for saying that. Um, Blake, going back to you, leaders in sports can positively influence athletes to achieve their goals all the way from the field to the boardroom. So how can you pay it forward? I would say just as Kate explained and Samantha so eloquently, just be a good mentor. Be open with your guidance and your advice to the youth or anybody, as Kate said, new to the organization. Um, I remember my first year working with the Los Angeles Kings. My first month, I had an outpour of people asking me, hey, do you need anything? How can I help you? And that really gave me the confidence to walk with such meaningful strides and, and try to inspire the younger generation as a growth and inclusion specialist. Um, I think that's really powerful. And right now, you know, we're working with the Alliance 11 teams in Los Angeles gathering together to make meaningful change for our younger generations, giving them the opportunity, leveling that playing field, and also just, just being that professional guidance for them. That is so important for our youth. And that's all we can be is an open book for these kids and our fellow sisters. Excellent. Love that. We're going to go right back to you, Blake. Uh, what is women's empowerment? Is it about gender equality or is it more than that? Especially for you being in a male dominated industry. I'm excited to hear your answer here. <laughs> oh, yes. Women's empowerment is about being bold, being confident, supporting your fellow sisters, as I just mentioned, having a great network and connecting with one another because we all have to have each other's back. Without that, we have nothing. And not just from the women, but from the men, which I'm experiencing so much right now in this male dominated field, is that the men want us here too. And you just have to be that powerful person wherever you are. When you walk into a boardroom, know that you deserve to be there. Know that you are valued. Know that the things that are coming out of your mouth are important. And even if they're different from what everybody else is saying, that, add va that adds value to the conversation. And I've been learning this. <laughs> I'm turning 30 this year. This has been a lifelong journey for me to understanding that where you are in this moment is exactly where you need to be. I love that. And I can't believe so young and accomplishing so much. Every day, every day we're learning. Yes. Um, Samantha, you are all true champions in your own right, of course, and have accomplished incredible things in the world of sport. But as we've talked about, it's required a journey for you to get to where you are now. So what individual or individuals have had the greatest p impact on you growing up that provided the inspiration for you to succeed in the sports world? <laughs> you know, my parents for sure would be the number one answer first and foremost, always, um, they going through a traumatic experience where I was on crutches for three years and had damage to my right leg as a result of surgeries going awry. It, I, they weren't in my life and a part of it and really good at just being there. I wouldn't be where I am today. And I know that without a doubt. Um, and even too, like, there's always been hurdles. I, I got a athletic scholarship, full athletic scholarship to the University of Central Florida with rowing out of getting off crutches. I took up rowing and fell in love with it. And then ultimately couldn't finish my collegiate career with rowing. I had to retire and it was, it was devastating. I, I lost the sense of my identity and my parents were there through thick and thin. So there'll always be, <laughs> 
the people I'm going to get emotional now, they'll always be the people that I look up to and the people that like my first call when I do a race, a good race, I would say my husband if he was here, but like, I want to call my parents too. Like I want my parents to see it. And one of the reasons I want to keep doing as many Paralympics as I can is so that they can be there in person and see it. And, and because I love it and they've, they've been there to instill that, but there's been people throughout my whole career that have seen something in me that have shown me through their support, through their encouragement, that I should be believing in myself just as much, if not more, because there is something there. And most recently with uh, a woman that I met right before COVID who actually ended up becoming a sponsor of mine, a local car dealership that became a sponsor. And she just, the amount of love that she gives to everybody and the support that she gives to everybody has just been something that I admire and I look up to. So I feel for me, I have athletes and female athletes and female singers, Serena Williams, Pink, all these people that are such huge role models, but it's the people behind the scenes, the people that are helping you back up when you fall, the people that are being there for you on the sideline cheering that I feel like I look up to even more. That's awesome. I love that. Um, and really quick, if you're comfortable, if, for those that don't know your story, uh, if you want to share your road to the Paralympics. Yeah. So I was born with a bowed tibia, meaning the bone above my ankle on my right side was curved. Um, I joked that it looked like a hockey stick. Uh, and then at four, I had that part of my bone surgically removed. So my right leg was two and a half inches shorter than my left. I did everything like a normal kid would. I didn't really seem to have any obstacles or hurdles as far as the discrepancy. And at 11, I had a limb lengthening surgery to basically extend my right tibia so that I didn't have any joint problems. There were complications from the surgery. Uh, three months on crutches turned out to be three years. I had probably a dozen surgeries. Um, permanent damage to my right leg now, including nerve damage from my knee down. Uh, a shorter right leg still and an ankle that doesn't move. And so I... I stopped riding a bike even because I was mountain biking before surgeries and took up rowing, started rowing, couldn't make it rowing either. Um, so my dad got me back on a road bike and a friend of mine told me about paracycling about two years back into racing on the bike and went up to a road race with my mom in South Carolina classified as a C5, which with the way the categories work makes it I'm one of the more functional of the disabilities as far as paracycling goes and started dreaming about the Paralympic games and fulfilling that nine-year-old dream I had of being a professional athlete. That's absolutely incredible. You are very inspiring your road to where you've gotten and um, you are the poster child for if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. <laughs> Thank you. I try. <laughs> it's incredible. Kate, we're going to go to you with another question. Um, having a strong support system is very important. How would you suggest looking for support? We touched on this a little earlier. Uh, and what questions should the young women watching right now ask? I, uh, I, that's a good question. I will step aside for a second, and I feel like all my answers are just, you know, so out of context given the, like, pure power that I'm seeing from from Blake and Samantha. I just, you know, me talking about the law kind of pales in comparison, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm more than happy to. What you do is important too. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I, I push paper, but it is important. <laughs> um, so I, I think in terms of support. So I, I think um, one thing I would say, uh, Blake, what you said earlier, you said something about standing in your power. And I thought that was such a cool line. And so what I would say about support first is to make sure you're supporting yourself. Um, I think a lot of us... Uh, suffer from imposter syndrome. We feel like we're not good enough. We feel like, you know, even me getting the invite to this panel today, I thought, but me, really? Um, and so I, I think just understanding, uh, making sure that you are, again, you're supporting yourself and you're doing what you need to do to recognize your own worth. Um, and that kind of goes to, to women's empowerment too. We have to recognize our power both individually and collectively, right? So I think that that's one thing. And then um, Samantha, you may have talked about this earlier about asking for help. And so I think that question, you can, you can look at it two ways. One is, can you help me? 
and how can I help you? And I think um, asking for help is really important. Delegating is really important. Um, that, you know, as you get into your professional life, I think that that is one way to help you achieve success is to realize that you can't do it all yourself. And I think we as women do fall, fall victim to that sometimes is that we try to do everything ourselves. Um, and so delegating and asking for help is really important. And also one of the things I always look to and one of the things that I found a lot of success, success from is, is constantly asking, how can I help? Uh, so when somebody's going through something, whether it's personal or professional, it's a really powerful question. And I think it not only leads to you learning something, um, but it leads to you building connections with people that, you know, are just as important in any environment than, than the actual work that you're doing. So um, I think asking those questions uh, and, and, and entering you so, sort of whatever life situation with, with service in mind, um, I think is is one way to really uh, contribute to to finding the support that you need. And Kate, just to get a little deeper dive on you, um, obviously your background in legal, what does a typical day look like for you? Oh, I, I mean, it sounds cliche, but truly, I, I, I don't think I have one. Um, and hopefully that encourages some of you out there to, to realize that law isn't boring. Um, and, and particularly <laughs> in this in this industry, I so I I I'm a contract lawyer. So I, I basically anything that goes on a piece of paper that needs to help our team or our building run, it, I do. So for people who aren't that familiar with AEG, we own or operate a number of arenas and stadiums around the world. Um, most famously, probably Staples Center here in Los Angeles and LA Live, Dignity Hill Sports Park where the Galaxy play. We also own the LA Galaxy and the LA Kings. And so um, I handle everything from you know, the, the concessionaire, the, the people that sell the hot dogs to the signage outside to sponsorship deals with the team um, and anything you can think of, I, I, I handle it. So contracts for concerts. I mean, it, it's I get to touch a lot of really cool things. And I, and I think one of the things that's most fulfilling for me is that there's a real tangible product to what I do. And, and I work on things that make people happy. Um, sports bring people together and, and it's a whole new way of, of me being able to participate in something that I love. And so it's pretty cool to go to a game and, and, and see, you know, if you see some cool activation on the ice or you see signage around the building or, or you try, there's some, some new beer cart or something and you say, well, I got to work on that. You know, like I, I know why that's there and how it got there. And, um, it's, it's, it's a cool thing for me to, to, to be a part of. I mean, for lack of a better word, you all are rock stars. Just know that. Um, <laughs> was there, Kate, an aha moment that led you to believe that you could accomplish great things in your life? Uh, that's a really good question. I think I, I had a hard time coming up with an example here because I, I think I've been, you know, fortunate enough, as I talked about earlier, to have the support from a lot of wonderful people making me feel like I could pursue whatever I really wanted to pursue. But if I, I think if I had to pick one and it's, it's kind of a really mundane thing, but it, it had a large impact on me when I was thinking about going to law school, I applied to a lot of places. And I did not get in a lot of places. And so that um, that was hard for me because I I had found a lot of academic success early on. And I thought, OK, like, you know, I'm smart. I can apply places. I can go to law school. I can do this. And and I started to um, get some no's. And that's that's hard to hear. And I uh, I was in San Diego at the time in college and um, was actually going to go to Notre Dame. I had gotten in there and I flew home. I moved all my stuff. I was going to go to school. I had been waitlisted at UCLA, which is where I really wanted to go. So I thought, okay, well, you know, it's just not in the cards for me. And um, I got the opportunity to go to UCLA to talk to an admissions counselor as part of my sort of wait list process. And so I went and I had an interview and I, I said my piece and tried to talk about why I thought I could contribute and what I could get out of the program and didn't hear anything, didn't hear anything. So I thought, okay, you know, this is where I'm supposed to be in life. And I'm at home in Chicago and I get a call two weeks before school starts and said, hey, you got in to UCLA, come be a Bruin. And so I, in, in, a, in a way, that taught me a couple of things. Um, you know, I, you, you're, you're a person on paper, you have stats, you know, but you're, there's so much more to you when you can actually do something in person. And, the, and, and so I, I, I actually said to myself, like, I did that, right? I don't think I would have gotten in had I not had that interview. And so I think it gave me a lot of confidence to say, okay, who I am as a person and who I am face to face um, off of my stats on a page, if you will. Uh, really sort of showed me that I can, I can, um, I can reach, you know, I can reach my goals if I put my mind to it. And so I think um, if I had to pick one, that's, that's probably it. That's awesome. Can you sing the UCLA fight song for us? 
I can do the eight clap, but I won't do it. <laughs> Love it. Samantha, we're going to go back over to you. Leaders in sports can positively influence athletes to achieve their goals all of the way from the field to the boardroom. How can you play it, pay it forward or play it forward? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I feel like for me, the biggest way that I can, aside from just continuing to be a cyclist and continuing to race and continuing to show up and even race in the men's categories and hang in with the crowd and show that women are just as strong, if not stronger from time to time than our male counterparts is just to continuously share my story, continuously share the hurdles, the support I've gotten, the, what I've learned to help the future generation have a better starting block to get further in life. And I feel like for me, I've had moments where I've had girls come up to me and say, you know, I, I didn't feel like I belonged. And because I heard you say something and I don't even know what it was I said, they felt like they could belong and they kept going and they, they went off and can you continue to be an athlete or they chose a different career path. And so for me, just sharing and being like Blake said, an open book, um, because you don't know what's gonna resonate with somebody and you don't know what they're going to take from a conversation or an article or even a discussion panel that really hits home and, and shows them that they can do it too. Awesome. Uh, Blake, we're going to ask you another question here, but before we do, we've taken a little deep dive on Samantha and Kate. So I want you to tell everybody um, just kind of where you got your start in hockey and how you went all the way up the ranks from high school to college to the professional ranks and now working in the NHL. So give us a little background on you. All right. I'll try to make it as quick as possible. I, I grew up in Cleveland. My mother was a single mother. She fell in love with a police officer. His side job was a security officer for the IHL Cleveland Lumberjacks. He used to take me to the games. I was enamored. I fell in love. I picked up a stick. I learned to play. I played at the highest level of youth boys hockey, got bullied. You know, you're a girl. You can't be here. Oh, and you're black too. So that's not okay in that, in that time. Um, and so from there, I just kept battling, battling, loving the game. I went to a prep school so I could get recruited to Boston College where I received a full scholarship. I tried out for the Olympic team. I got cut. I wanted to give up. And then I said, I can't because I love the game too much. I continue to play professionally where I became the first black professional women's ice hockey player in the NWHL. I won some championships. I've used this platform to travel the world and interact with beautiful young girls and boys. Um, and I was with Black Girl Hockey Club at the Staples Center where I was introduced to Luke Robitaille and he asked me if I was interested in becoming a scout. And I said, absolutely, you're Luke Robitaille and I think you're the coolest guy on earth. And I definitely wanna learn how to become a scout. Uh, the interview process was swift. I knew my stuff from playing hockey for 20 years. And here I am as well being a growth and inclusion specialist with the Los Angeles Kings too. Incredible. I actually didn't know the Luke Robitaille story. I had no idea that's how you <laughs> in the organization. That's amazing. So cool. Yes, it's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> and she's been killing it ever since. Um, Blake, can you, can you tell us about a cause or a program that you feel strongly about? Well, I have to mention Black Girl Hockey Club as they are the reason that I'm here today. This club is great because it brings non-traditional ice hockey fans and girls and boys into the ice arenas. At first it started off small and now they're catapulting into every single club in the NHL being supported by the National Hockey League. They have scholarships for non-traditional ice hockey players and I'm a mentor in one of those, which I take uh, such great pride in. And these girls are so excited to be a part of Black Girl Hockey Club. They've gotten money for equipment and traveling expenses, things that sometimes it, it can be a difficult playing ice hockey as, as the expensive sport we know that it is. And uh, it's been such a privilege and an honor to be alongside them. 
Um, and I hope that we continue to give them the funding and the money that they need to keep changing many, many lives in the future. All right. Um, all three of you are such an inspiration in everything that you're doing and with as it relates to sports and just, just being women in sometimes male-dominated industries. So you guys are all people to look up to. We are so thankful to have you on with us today. Um, we're going to do another question. What advice do you have for the young women listening to you today? We're going to start with Blake. My advice would be to be your authentic self. Um, so many times when I was young, I tried to change who I was and that's not cool. You have to love yourself. As Kate Sheets said, you have to figure out what you enjoy, figure out your friends, the people that support you, that can be your sponsors and mentors to be successful. So I would just say, find who you are and love who you are. That's amazing. Um, and why did you choose sports? I chose sport because it was a channel for me. It was something that anchored me. I could control how much effort and energy I put into it. I could win. I could be physical. And it's so much fun playing sports as a child to be around your friends and to learn more about yourself. So sports is definitely something that has helped me learn so many positives, how to get along with teammates, how to think creatively, how to give 100%. And you, you just have this enormous bank of information that you get from playing sports. 100%. Samantha, same question for you. What advice do you have for the young women listening to you today? Well, Blake told, took my answer. <laughs> um, but so I couldn't say it better than she could. So I would add to not be sorry for who you are and stop apologizing so much. I think for a lot of times we're told we have to be a certain way and uh, we question the decisions we make. And when we're ourselves and and we trust ourselves and we go with that gut instinct, it gets easier to do it. And we shouldn't have to apologize for who we are. We should be able to take up presence because we offer value also. So important. Yes. We can't stress that enough. Um, yeah. And Samantha, why did you get into sports? Oh, so many reasons. I feel like for me, the first and foremost was just the power I felt. Um, I'm also very competitive, so I have to win at everything. <laughs> Uh, board games in our house is not a fun game night. <laughs> um, but for me, it was just into this day, like, I get on a bike and I feel powerful, I feel untouchable. And I feel like every time I play a sport or get on a bike, I can take that feeling off the bike and be successful in other avenues of my life. And, and yeah, I, people feel like family. You meet so many people along the way that you just become friends with and you bond because like sports can be suffering sometimes and, and you bond through that and it becomes kind of even closer than just friends. You basically become family. And, and that's a fun feeling to feel like I have family all over the world and, and can rely on other people and see them be successful and see me be successful and like enjoy life together. So good. Um, and Kate, what advice do you have for the young women listening to you today? Sure. So I will echo 1000% what was just said. But if I, I have a motto that I've had since high school that I got from my calculus teacher, believe it or not. So if you remember nothing that I say today, I would say write this down. And that is champions adjust. Um, so that is that is what I really apply it to like every situation because I like it because number one, you're, it forces you to think of yourself like a champion, right? Like, what is that? And so that goes to that whole notion of, of self-worth and self-confidence and adjusting, you know, seems pretty obvious, but you're, you're going to face adversity in life. You're going to face challenge. Um, you're going to face uncertainty. You're, you're going to face insecurity and, and all you have to do is adjust. You have to be, and you can right? You can be nimble. Um, you can maneuver, you can move on, you can try something new, you can recover. Uh, so I think, um, 
I have it on my wall. I tell it to everybody, every, every panel I sit on, every meeting I'm in, I use it all the time. So I think it's a great, um, it's just a great little tidbit. You can write down, put it on a sticky note and stick it on your monitor and remember uh, to apply it whenever you face a challenge. Champions adjust. There it is. Love it. Um, and then Kate, why, why did you get into sports? What was, what was the reason behind it? Oh, I, I, you know, so like Samantha says so many reasons too. I, I think, um, I, I love the way that sports make me feel and I love the way it makes other people feel. I mean, I, I think it, it, it is a space number one, where you can be your authentic self. I mean, it, I think you find out who people really are, um, in, in sport, right. Whether you're playing it or cheering, um, but I think it, it brings so many people together and it makes so many people happy and, and it makes so many people sad, but there's just such a, it's such a unique experience to have that collective, um, shared sort of emotion and passion over something. And, and even though I, you know, peaked in high school in terms of my athletic ability, um, my, my passion has really only grown over time. And, and it's such an, uh, an honor to be able to, um, bring this type of content to people as a job. I mean, I, I didn't really think that that was something I could do. And AEG's company motto is giving the world a reason to cheer, which is, you know, like cutesy, but in the same time, it's totally legit. And, and it's, and it's real. It's a real thing. I think, um, you know, it, it, it just sports, sports and entertainment just means something to people. Um, and it's a common thread that, that we can all share. And it, it's, uh, something that I, I feel really fortunate to, to be a part of on a daily basis. Incredible. Um, before I let you all go today, I just wanted to open up the floor and uh, see if there's anything else that you wanted to say today to these young women watching you, uh, any, you know, advice you want to give them for along the way, anything that we didn't cover today that you'd like to uh, just get out. Anyone can go. Anything, ladies, anything? Uh, you know, I would just say to just smile and have fun and, and fail. I feel like for me, such a big fear is failing and you're always gonna fail. Like sport itself should teach you that it's okay to fail. Like baseball, you, my brother was a baseball player. So like <laughs> you, you have a 330 average batting average and it's good, but nobody stops to think 333, is three out of 10 times you hit the ball. Like seven of those times, you didn't get, a hit, you didn't make contact with the ball. You struck out, you struck out swinging something. So like, you're gonna fail and it's okay because that's part of finding what happens in life. And it's part of finding what you can succeed with and learning from it. So I think just have fun and fail and know that it's okay and pick yourself back up and just keep smiling. And I, I would say not to underestimate this, maybe this seems obvious, but don't underestimate the value of your relationships. And it doesn't mean you have to um, meet everybody or, or network with every single person. And there are some people I know who are great at that and they hustle and, you know, they've got amazing networks. I was not one of those people. I, I really focused on, quality relationships, um, kind of one at a time. And, and that was just my method. But at the same time, it's, I, I never burned a bridge. And I, I think you have to remember that. And, and it's, um, the reason I'm here today is, is because of that, honestly, you know, I, I worked hard, but I also had some people who thought of me along the way to help me out. And so, um, and, and you just never know when those relationships are going to come back around. And so it, I, I think it's important to keep, to keep that in mind. And it's, it's that traditional sort of work hard, be nice mentality, but you just, it, it, it's, it's true. I think it's real. And, and in, investing in those relationships is important. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Blake, did you want to add anything or no? I think my sisters did an amazing job. <laughs> Echoed. <laughs> Echoed by all. Absolutely. Well, Blake, Samantha, Kate, thank you so much for your time today. You ladies are such an inspiration and we just, I know I enjoyed hearing your stories, your advice. Um, you guys are inspiring to the young women listening today and we thank you for your time and uh, can't wait to see all the things you ladies are going to do in the future. Thanks so much. Thank you. I am going to invite Bonnie back uh, for some closing remarks. Bonnie, closing remarks. Bonnie. 
<laughs> Thanks so much, Kayla. I want to thank both you and all the rest of our panelists. Your time, your participation, your inspiration, pretty amazing. I know, you know, working on that 333 average and building the relationships, which I did a lot of in sports early years. So uh, absolutely. I think that sports teach you lessons that apply both on and off the field, uh, into the courtroom, Kate, and into the boardroom. All of these things are pretty important. I think you can hear again how these amazing individuals and others by joining the Ready, Set, Goal Spring Series, uh, where you can see a few familiar faces and uh, even some new ones. Also, I would tell you that check out the WISE website, www.ymca.org, for other opportunities to engage. I know we'll be doing another panel discussion on Monday, April 12th. So please join us again then when we're going to talk about how sports promotes health and wellness, self-confidence, teamwork, decision-making, and social skills. Above all, perseverance. Women in sports continue to smash gender stereotypes, as I talked about before, and providing inspiring role models. Gender equality is important on this International Women's Day and always. So thank you everyone and join us again soon. Darkness I rose up, go to my soul, it's a gold rush. Yeah, yeah. Uh, honor and freedom, I toast up, kicking game on the snare drum. Hard on the beat, let it bleed out like sacrifices, cut it open emotions. Spilling like oil and coasting. There are people my mental, I'm pinning a pistol and shoot down the criticisms individually. I heard the voices that told us. Yeah, yeah. No dirt on my name and wish me the worst and stole us, yeah. Shot through the heart and pray on my downfall. But young T prevailed on my outlaw. Stand on top of the table like John Wall. Got the cross on my chest like Olympic gold. Rapids move on the floor like a jazz song. Witness greatness, look up and look far home. Remember